This is a round, round cycle discussion on soil moisture sensors sold and supported in the Mid-South. My name is Lyle Pringle. I work in irrigation uh, research at Delta Research and Extension Center at Stoneville. I've been working with sensors for a few years. Uh, mainly started with the soil water potential sensor, uh, a lot of us refer to as watermark. Uh, and the last couple of years I've been working with some uh, capacitance type sensors, uh, biometric water con content, uh, the probe type. And both these sensors I feel are useful in giving you more information of what's going on below the soil surface so you can make a better irrigation decision. There are a lot of talks throughout this uh, conference on irrigation scheduling using soil moisture sensors. But uh, what I've done today is invited uh, four or five vendors here to give a brief overview of uh, what they provide because there's many options. Uh, you've got the sensors and then you have how you get the information to you out of the field. Do you go measure it manually or do you get it out of the field uh, by radio or cell, put it on the server so that you can access it easily. Uh, I know when I first started, I went out into the field and manually had a data uh, reader, manually read three times a week, every sensor at every depth at every sensor site. So I had three points a day. I moved next to having a data logger and was able to have that take at whatever program time, one hour, two hour, four hours, whatever you wanted. And life got better. Because all I had to go was to that central site and download it. Then I went to radioing it out of the field to a central receiver at the edge of the field. And I can have multiple sensor sites out there going to that one central receiver. Uh, and I could go and download that and life got even better. But now with cell modems and stuff like that, you can either from that central receiver or, or from that uh, each sensor site, you can send that data to a server and then have access to it with your smartphone or your uh, computer, tablet, and that's good. So, but all these things cost, and so I'm going to ask each one to get up individually, each vendor, and give you an idea of, of what they offer, uh, and maybe look at, touch on what the costs are so, so we can kind of get us some kind of comparison. And while they're doing that, come up with questions that you may have uh, that might help you understand them better or become adopt them sooner because we feel like they will help you save water and I think in the long run they will be economic. So at this time I'd like to ask Brett to start off. Uh, Brett Norman is with uh, AgSmarts. Uh, is that here in Memphis? Yeah, yeah we're at the Agri Center if you guys know where that is here in Memphis, East Memphis. All right, thank you, Lyle. Um, well, lady and gentlemen, uh, there's one Michelle down in the back. Um, like Lyle said, I'm Brett Norman. I'm the CEO, uh, founder of Ag Smarts. We're a couple years old, um, out of uh, Memphis here. Um, we are a manufacturer of sensing stations. Soil moisture sensors are certainly a, a big part of what go into our platform, um, but there's also temperature sensing. Um, really any digital inputs with dry pulses like rain, flow, um, energy, uh, those things can go into our boxes as well. The reason I've been um, to borrow his case real quick was I mentioned this, but just to give you a sense of what they look like, uh, this is a sensing station, it's a smaller unit, um, and you configure them with you know, number of sensors, these, these are all for uh, watermarks, uh, so these are measured resistance, uh, there's a resistance temperature sensor over here as well. We have a larger unit that, um, same idea, just more configurability. Um, and this is where the telemetry options can come in. Um, 
Lyle had talked about the evolution of the technology from a telemetry perspective, or you know, it used to be just for data logging. These units do um, log on an hourly basis and store their data on a, um, a an eight gig SD card. But the way we built them is uh, from the ground up to give you a lot of flexibility from a telemetry perspective. Uh, they come native with Bluetooth, so you configure them with an, an app. Um, you tell it where it is, uh, what you're met monitoring. Um, you are um, also the depths of which you planted those sensors and and then they they mesh together uh, wirelessly if you're networking these units together across your farm so like Lyle mentioned also in that that example where he had infield sensors that were sending back to a centralized um, uh, logging location that can be very very similar analogous to uh, to what you could do with these units uh, a mile line of sight between the units um, you got to you know, watch for tree lines and topography changes and things like that. But um, again, what we tried to build was a very cost-effective and uh, flexible solution that guys could build um, their networks out easily, get the data that they need off the fields to make those um, irrigation or agronomic decisions. Um, one of the things Lyle asked about were some of the, the questions that come, have come to us as we've deployed units, as we've uh, worked with our dealers and, and, um, and growers. I think the meshing is a, is a is, can be um, you know there can be some nuances there, making sure that you're getting good connectivity between the units. Um, we offered both telescoping poles and flexible antennas to get above crops, so you really got to watch out for foliage that you know can inter, um, interfere with the RF or the wireless signal between the units. So getting above those uh, those canopies is important. Obviously, I mentioned line of sight and avoiding tree lines or. Um, in, in the Mid-South, I think there are real challenges. If you can do wireless technology anywhere, um, you, if you can do it in the Mid-South, you can do it anywhere, I guess is what I'm saying. The, the heat, um, the, the temperature fluctuations, the humidity, um, that has a huge uh, influence on the, the, um, the positive outcome of, of telemetry um, and networking these units. Um, I'm trying to think of other things. Uh, the placement of sensors is really important. I know that, that's a, a big question. We work through a dealer network, um, including agronomists and precision ag providers. Um, so that a lot of that heavy lifting is done um, at that level. The interpretation of the data, a lot of our growers, or the growers that use our equipment work through those dealer networks um, uh, for that support and understanding exactly what's happened. You know, is my crop stepping? Am I recharged now? You know, how much water do I need to introduce? You know, at R7, you know, my corn, am I dry down? Or those types of questions. Um, so. Uh, I'd also say too that we've talked a lot about the use of this technology, especially soil moisture sensors, um, and it's you know, rightfully so in irrigation, but I think just as important um, are agronomic decisions on dryland acreage um, and, the, and the usefulness of this type of technology, whether it be our probes or anybody else's. Um, examples of that might be a, a late season application of a fungicide or a, nu a nutrient introduction. If there's not soil moisture available for that crop to take um, and benefit from that crop through a transpiration, there's not, a, you know, you, you could be shooting yourself in the foot, I guess, if you don't get, you know, that, that moisture um, the rest of the season. We had a prime example of that up in uh, central Kentucky this year on some dryland corn, a late season, uh, cons the, the producer was considering a late season fungicide application. There was no soil moisture um, because of the, the dryness of, um, in, the, in the upper tiers of his soil profile because of the, the dry uh, conditions. And as you guys well know, and, and it was especially true up there, I think they were even drier than we were this fall. Um, he didn't get it. He spent $45,000 on a $30, acre, um, a $30 per acre um, application that, that didn't benefit his, um, his crop at all. So, you know, he lost $45,000 data from a unit like this, you know, could help could have helped him potentially have avoided that cost and waited until he did have that moisture or, um, you know, it, uh, if he didn't get it, he never would have put it down, I think. But are there other um, things, Lyle, that might be helpful? In your business plan or whatever, do you, I guess my question, do you just sell the equipment or how much service mm -hmm. support do you we sell the equipment to our dealer network, and then they offer the service on that. That can that can entail installation, uh, maintenance of the equipment, uh, extraction from the field. Because these, um, especially in our row crop uh, settings, these go in right after planting. Um, they come out right before harvest, or they're you know before that if if you're done irrigating, and, and that's what you're using the uh, the information for. Um, 
we do offer we can offer our dealers some service aspects of um, you know we can do some of the the refurbs the the firmware updates on the on the equipment as well um, what we've introduced to date is just the sensing side of our platform but long term it will be um, the, the plan is to introduce um, controllers that work in tandem with the, the data coming off of those so there can be a service aspect of that of you know modules and um, that you can engage in if, if um, that's something that you want to do um, I did one of the points you brought up I didn't address was uh, the price points um, this unit uh, retails for eleven $1 hundred dollars um, this one is an 850 uh, unit um, when you break it down, um, a typical scenario that we see is usually, you know, one of these and maybe five of these networked across a, an operation. That ends up to about an $8,000 investment, including a, um, a modem and a data plan um, over the course of a three-year life of, of this equipment. Um, that's around a $285, $3 investment on an acreage basis um, based on the typical area that we see these covering, um, which ranges from, you know, 50 to, I've seen them on, eight, on um, pivot irrigated farms of, you know, or sizes of a field of 600 some odd acres. Um, but a typical, you know, maybe a quarter section of land, you're looking at that price point. Okay. Thank that, you. Good. Thank you. Coleman, would you like to go next? Coleman Middleton is with Circle S Irrigation. Circle S Irrigation, Clarksdale, Mississippi. Uh, I'm the agronomist with Circle S. Uh, we, uh, 2011, we saw a need. We're a little background on Circle S is we're a, a full service valley irrigation center pivot dealer. Uh, we we do wells and and flood irrigation as well as pivots. Uh, in 2011, our owner, David Holt, uh, saw the need that we needed to focus a little bit more on technology with both soil moisture, uh, pivot automation, and pump and, uh, pump and engine automation. So we formed a separate company called Enviro Solutions uh, that strictly handles irrigation technology. So remote sensing and, and uh, pivot automation, soil moisture sensors, uh, remote weather stations. And what I do there is basically handle all the soil moisture and all that stuff. Um, as far as what we do and how we do it a little bit differently, we are a dealer and distributor for a lot of products that uh, a lot of other guys, I see, you know, we're a dealer for Brett uh, and several other dealers uh, or several other manufacturers. We both offer the, uh, the products, we install them, we service them, uh, we offer it both ways. So if the farmer wants to handle the installation and the setup of the units, uh, we can walk them through how to do that, or if they want a turnkey service where we set them up, we install them, we pull them out, clean them, service them, store them over the winter, and then basically sit back down with the farmer next year and say, where are we going and what are we putting them in? Um, we carry a bunch of different stuff from your basic watermarks, like Lyle started off talking about. Uh, you know, a lot, there's a lot of money out there available through NRCS for cost sharing on this stuff. So we go everywhere from your basic, your intermediate, and your advanced on your telemetry uh, packages. So you can start out with watermark sensors where you're manually checking them every day or every couple of days. Um, those units, you know, run just the sensors themselves, roughly about $50 a piece. Um, a sensor set per field is going to have at least three or four sensors because each one monitors a different depth. Um, you're looking at about 200 bucks to monitor four different depths on a field. Um, the next step up from that would be your data logger with four or five sensors tied into that. You're looking at about a $650 investment there. Um, now the, the benefit to that over your hand checking them is you can you know, log data while you're not there, but you do have to go physically once a week or so, pull the data off, download it to your computer, uh, and graph it. So it does take, uh, does take a little bit of labor to do that and time. Uh, what we have run across and has been the most successful for us and our producers are our packages with telemetry. So you guys can pull up your cell phone if you're an iPad user. Within a couple of clicks, you've got an app open. You're looking at live data, usually no more than 15 minutes old, of all of your soil moisture stations that you may have out there. So if you've got a scent theoretically, if you've got your center pivot running and it's walked over your uh, if it's walked over your sensor, um, you know, usually right after you do that, you know, an hour or so, you give it enough time to percolate down through the soil. You can pull it up and see how, how deep did I get water in there through that application and adjust accordingly, if, uh, especially on a center pivot if you need to slow it down, speed it up, 
Um, we Several units that we use with telemetry, we started out in 2011 using the Micrometer Connect systems. They are good, heavy-duty built systems, uh, really nice. The software package is a little, uh, little cumbersome for their average producer. You do have to sit down and log in on a website. Those units started out at about $4,500 five or six years ago. Um, what we have kind of transitioned into is a couple that we've been using the last three or four years. One is called the AquaSpy, which is a 12 sensor, 48 inch capacitance probe. It's a completely cellular unit. Um, the templates and everything that's set up is set up according to your field, soil type, planting date, maturity rate on what crop you've got. And so they basically custom build a template uh, around your field. Um, it gives you all of your data there. You can pull it up and see both your average line and your detailed view for every sensor all the way down to 48 inches. Those units retail for $1,295. Um, the other units that we are using telemetry packages on are, are the one that Brett told you about. The FNS standard is available both as a standalone unit where you can use it with a Bluetooth logger on your phone. Uh, so it's just like a logger. You go up to it once a week or twice a week. You open your app, it downloads that data off of, off of that unit, sends it via your cell phone data package that's on your phone, uh, so you don't have a cellular package with that. Uh, it bounces that to your user portal on their website, so you can sit in, log in, and do all that. Uh, same stuff, you can add a, a, a GPRS modem to it, where if you want it remotely all coming in without going out to, into the field, you know, to touch them, you can do that as well. The, the last unit that we've been using telemetry on and, and seeing a lot of good stuff with is the AgSense unit. Um, we can tie that both to your pivot controller and read it all off of one unit. Um, you can use you know, several different probes from your basic watermarks up to your high-end capacitance probe. So it's compatible with several different moisture probes that are out there. And again, those units, the AquaSpy is roughly around $1,295 to purchase that unit. Uh, the AgSense unit with a, with a similar probe is a roughly about $1,895 uh, for those two units for, with cellular. And like I said, we do offer installation service where we come out, set them up. Basically, you, you never touch the unit. Most times you never see the unit except for the flag that hasn't marked. So we come out, our crews come out, put them in, um, after you've planted, after you're ready, you know, if you're through going through the field or what, whatever you want to do, we come out and we help you locate a spot for them. We mark them, we put them in, we install them, set them up. You get ready or when you're done with irrigation, you call us, we pull them, uh, we bring them back to our, our location, clean them, go through them and check them and make sure everything's good and ready to go for the next year. Uh, anybody got any questions on particular products or Anything else that you guys may have seen out there? Thank you. Appreciate it. You want to the slides up for me? I'm Billy Coos. I'm with High Yield Ag Solutions. I'm holding a uh, Syntec two foot drill and drop probe, uh, soil moisture probe. This one has moisture and uh, temperature at four inch intervals. The first sensor's at two inches, and all of the drill and drop probes from Syntec um, have sensors at four inch intervals. They're available as moisture and temperature or moisture, temperature, and salinity. We, <coughs> you put the slides on? So this, this is kind of a typical install. We like to think of ourselves as a solutions company, so we try to solve the entire problem, provide a complete soil moisture monitoring solution in the end, all the way from the sensor in the ground through the cloud servers that we have in the Amazon uh, web services and all the way back to uh, applications that you can view the data on, either on your smartphone or your laptop. But this picture here is a uh, actually a three-foot Syntec probe. Syntec invented the volumetric capacitance probes. Dr. Peter Buss, who founded Syntec, invented that, that whole capacitance probe technology. And this is the latest evolution of, the, uh, of that standard. The uh, previous versions of these units were about that big in diameter and were pretty difficult to install because it was, you had to put a pretty big hole in the ground. But these new ones are very easy to install. There's a slight taper. I don't know if you can tell it on this two foot. 
There's a slight taper to the probe, and there's an auger that goes with these probes that also has a slight taper to it. So you just drill that hole in and drop them in, and you just have to push them in just a little bit. You know, once you get the hole, they're pretty easy. You just slide them right in, and that guarantees a real good contact with the edge of the probe. And that's that's very important according to Syntec. These are um, uh, Syntec would say that you really don't want a slurry. You want a direct contact with the soil so you don't interfere with the soil texture along the profile. But it's very simple. This, our cellular radio is in this mass section here. This was an installation on peanuts. Uh, there's additional sections that can be uh, fitted into this mass. So if you're in corn or higher crop, you can start out low so you can still get the equipment over the field. And then, you know, as the crop grows and as you're through with equipment, you can stack sections on there if you need it. We've, we found the cellular coverage to be excellent and we really haven't needed to worry too much about getting height on the mass. But in most corn installations, we'll put another two sections on. Each section is three feet of extension. And uh, so anyway, let's go to the next slide. We also supply uh, agronomy support. There's a team of agronomists as part of High Yield Ag. And so we offer, through our dealer network, we have agronomists within High Yield Ag to back up our dealers. Uh, but we try to make this just really simple to use. There's not even an on-off switch on the radio. There's no configuration. You basically just plug the sensor in. And when you do that, the radio figures out what sensor it's connected to and starts relaying data through the cloud servers. And then depending on the sensor network or the sensor type we're, we're using, and today we're talking about soil moisture probes, but we have different visualization that you can look at for the data. But there's no configuration. There's not even a power cable or an on button. You, there's a QR code on the bottom of it. There's a scan on your phone. You scan the radio. When you go to install it, it takes you to the website, fills in the serial number of the radio. All you really have to do is name the location that you're putting this in at. This is, you know, uh, what's, a, what's a good one? I know we had a lot of fields with the name Pivot in it. So this was Pivot Field 37 or something. But you plug it in, and there's three LEDs on the bottom. And you just watch the LEDs. When they come on, you know everything's working. There's one for the cell network, one for the sensor itself, and one for the power on the radio. It's all battery operated, rechargeable batteries, they last for a season. And you drop this thing down to the bottom of the mast. Um, one reason we separated them out, there's a, there's a real common bus that we use on this radio called an SDI-12. Most sensor manufacturers provide sensors with an SDI-12 interface. So that means we can actually plug in multiple sensor types. So, it's possible in one location to support not only a soil moisture probe, but a weather station, or a, a leaf wetness sensor, or some other type of sensor all in one place. We'll get to the next slide there. It's really easy to use. The data is all collected automatically. It's automatically sent to cloud servers. Everything is organized by your farm and the fields on your farm. So when you pull it up, you see a list of your fields, and you just flip over the charts. Any of you that have been to the earlier seminars know what these stepping patterns mean, and you know I think everybody presents. But this is a stack chart showing all the depths. This was a three-foot probe. And you can see at the beginning of the season, you can see the differences in root depth. I mean, these are all things that people that talk about soil moisture probes like to talk about, and then some charts. So let's go to the next one. I don't want to take up much time. We got they have, I've kind of said this already, but um, you know, it's, it's a system that consists of the radios, the sensors, we're a Verizon wireless partner, uh, goes back to the cloud servers and you get in and you read your data. And really, you don't have to do anything. You just plug them in, install the sensors, and start looking at your data. And we do have, as I said earlier, other, other sensors that you can plug in. So if you'll flip on. So Syntec is kind of our focus. We're the uh, Southeast distributor for Syntec. As I told you, that they're the inventor of the volumetric capacitance probe. Um, they measure water content, temperature, and optionally salinity at every depth. We don't see a lot of salinity use here, but in Florida, we have a lot of probes where they're using salinity because they're tracking the nutrients as they flow down through the column. Uh, drill and drops, the latest generation, we have them in one, two, three, and four foot. Every one of them is three sensors per foot. And as I said, and again, you can see this is a little longer probe, but you might be able to pick up the taper there. I don't know. But that's, this, is the, this is kind of our go-to solution. We believe this is the, the best soil moisture monitoring solution available. Okay, let's go. And this just shows some of the size. This rendered, we, we worked really hard to make sure this renders well on phones. So a lot of our, a lot of our growers, you know, look at this on their phones. 
I think this is actually off of our, of our browser, but you get a real nice picture. We also track uh, ET. ET. I don't know how much you know about the, the soil moisture probes out there, but ET is a really important confirmation of what you're seeing in the steps. As the steps collapse, sometimes that's an indication of stress. That's what, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for either too wet or too dry, and you look for those steps collapsing. Well, if you start to see steps collapse and the ET is going down, it could simply be that the requirements of the plant have come down. But if you see the steps start to compress and ET is either going up or staying flat, it's a pretty good indication that the crop is going into stress. So I don't want to get into that in this forum because there's a lot you can say about that. But let's go on in. This just breaks it down a little more so you can see a little more. Then we also offer a uh, interface board that, again, it plugs into the bottom of the radio that interfaces to the aerometer tensiometer probes. Um, this year we're offering a five sensor interface board so you can go up to five aerometer sensors. And um, the difference between the uh, aerometers and the, and the Syntex, the Syntex measure volumetric water content, the aerometers measure, um, I think, the effort to extract the water out of the ground. I think, I think our aerometer buddy is back here, so he can tell a lot more about it than I can. But in any case, we offer an interface to the, to the tensiometers. And again, you can get that on the website if you want to flip up. I think there's one, maybe one more slide. Uh, a little different, yeah. This year we're offering a, a water level sensor that also plug, again, you can use this side by side with the soil moisture probe in the same radio. And uh, the reason we started to do this is we're getting interest from rice farmers for this alternate wet dry irrigation. And last year we did some trial runs where we put a soil moisture probe right next to a water level sensor. So on one website, he could see his water level in that flooded field as well as what the probe was telling him down in the ground. And these are pretty nice. They're made by a company called Malone. They're E-tapes. They come in various um, lengths. And there's chemical versions available so you can use them for diesel fuel or, or chemicals. And what we've done is um, we've, we've got our own little circuit card that goes up in this cap that measures from the e-tape, it's a resistance measure like a, like a tensiometer, but it measures the resistance to pick up the water level and converts that to an SDI-12 interface. So this is actually, the, the probe that we make like this is actually an SDI-12 water level sensor. And then we're uh, working with a couple of different weather stations, but the reality is, is any weather station that has an SDI-12 or an RS-232 interface we can connect to. But we're working with Rainwise and Gill Instruments uh, for the for this next growing season, okay, and we're uh, we're coming out with flow meter monitoring capability as well. Another another card like the aerometer card you saw that will do pulse counting to pick up the uh, the flow rates off the flow meters, and this year probably a pump shut off. So, and that's that's really it. I didn't mention that we have agronomy support behind High Yield Lab. We have a team of agronomists that uh, help our dealers. We have dealers in Florida. Uh, Mississippi, uh, I think we've got some coming online in Alabama, uh, Louisiana and Arkansas this year. So we've got a pretty good dealer network and they've been really happy with, uh, you know, with what we've seen this past year. Okay. Thank you. Questions? Uh, uh, Ryan, did you, did you come up? Uh, I'm Ryan Fry. I'm from Louisiana. Uh, our family primarily farms. Uh, we farm roughly around 12,000 acres, over about 120 miles, I guess. And we have an irrigation company business as well on the side called Smart Acre, Smart Acre Solutions. And I mostly, uh, I primarily just manage our irrigation company and then also manage the irrigation on our farm as well. Uh, Whenever we first, whenever I first got back, uh, my dad was primarily just doing underground uh, pipeline installation and sales. Uh, and once I came on board, we kind of started expanding our uh, product line. And we went. I started looking for sensors that would kind of best fit our operation on our farm, being as we were so spread out. I want something that was user friendly. Uh, didn't take a whole lot of time for it to install, and uh, being as I was 
taking care of all the irrigation across the entire farm. I uh, wanted something that I could use uh, fairly quick. So I looked into the AquaCheck uh, probes uh, and they, I like them. They're similar to the Syntec and the AquaSpies as well. Uh, they're capacitance probe. They come 12 to 60 inches. Uh, each probe has six sensors set at different depths depending on what length, length you get. Uh, and then this year I used the uh, AgSense telemetry units on the uh, wired probes. And I've had pretty good luck out of those. Uh, and then AquaCheck also has a fully wireless probe uh, which connects with a uh, wireless data logger. You have to go up to the probe and it'll wirelessly connect get the information off of it, you bring it back to your computer and it uploads it to the website and then you can look at the data from there. Uh, the probe stores the data from the last time that you uh, took a download off of it till uh, whenever you go back to it and it also stores the entire season to where if you want to do a full download you can go back and get the entire season off of it. Uh, and then uh, like I said, this year we went with the AgSense, so we had the Wagnet uh, app on those. Uh, they did release a new logger this past year. Uh, to me, they released it a little bit sooner than they should have. We had a little bit of a uh, few issues out of it, but everything, they do seem to have it all worked out now. So uh, hopefully this year will be a little bit better. Uh, the probes retail for with the wireless probes around a thousand. The wired probes for the telemetry units retail around nine, around 900, and then uh, depending on they'll they have we go with the ag sense so those retail with that uh, aqua track lights that I'll use this year they're around 800, uh, and then of course they're SDI 12 so any of the telemetry units that uh, you've heard about so far uh, they can adapt to those as well. Uh, I guess that's really about it. Any questions? Thank you, Ryan. Uh, I've got one more, Nick. Okay. Nick King is a consultant in Mississippi Delta and uh, offers. I mean, does soil water moisture monitoring for producers, and I think he has also been part of developing some electronics to help get that data out of the field. But uh, what kind of questions would, would y'all have in, as far as trying to get this in your fields, how to make it work in, in your field? Well, I'll say uh, one thing that a question that a lot of times we get is, okay, it's great to see your data on your portal, um, but is there a way to get it where I already go, you know, whether that's um, John Deere Field Connect, you know, the John Deere Science or whatever precision app platform that they they, uh, they work with. And there are ways, I don't know about the other, you know, technologies, but our data can feed through an API into a, a larger precision app platform, so it can be a piece of the data sets that the, the growers are, you know, the, that's the dashboard they go to. Yeah. That would be beneficial. Nick? Yeah, my name is Nick King. I'm a second generation ag consultant. Uh, my dad's been a, a typical ag consultant since for 30, 35, almost 40 years now. And several years ago, we saw a huge need for soil moisture management and making our farms as efficient as they can because efficiency is usually equate to profitability as well. Uh, so kind of like Ryan, my dad still kind of does what he does. And uh, I took head on the irrigation needs for, uh, for our company. And out of that uh, came Precision King. We do two things. First thing we do is I do irrigation and agronomy consulting. You know, we call, we'll come and install it. We come once a week to check the crop to see stress, what water levels and make recommendations when to water, when not to water. That's one piece of what we do. Uh, the second thing, uh, like AxMarts, we are actually the manufacturer of our equipment. Uh, 
Uh, we design, build, manufacture, and sell uh, our, our custom uh, soil moisture units. Um, you know, uh, we'll kind of come back, circle camp back to this, but uh, one thing that really sets us apart is that we actually have a product line. Uh, we sell soil moisture, that's part of it. But what we found is that growers want to be able to get all their remote sensing in one location. Because right now they kind of get soil moisture at one place, they get pivot automation at one place, pump automation here, and it's, you know, juggling a lot of different interfaces, a lot of different stuff, and they want it in one place. Uh, we offer that. We have soil moisture, we have pivot automation, pump automation, flow meter automation, and we'll be introducing rice. Uh, this year. The second biggest thing that every grower I see says that they want is they want their cell, their yearly cell phone fee to go down. <laughs> and we're kind of in the same market that we have uh, uh, developed a mesh wireless system where you have a cellular unit and then you can get five, six, seven non-cellular uh, units that will home run back and send it up. Uh, there again, we have one mile line of sight. Uh, you kind of heard uh, previously that that actually is line of sight, uh, depending on how bad the trees are, it's about a quarter mile if you've got a big tree line. If it's, you can see through the tree line, you can generally kind of line yourself up and still get some good, good uh, distance out of that. Uh, but the mesh networks that have actual distance, like a mile, you know, with a mile we can jump from pivot to pivot. Uh, you know, so that's, that's a pretty big deal. But every girl I see says, you know, this. Our, our annual sale fee is $175. Uh, some of these sale fees are a lot more than that. And obviously uh, with wireless, if you only have cellular units, you're paying a cellular fee for each unit. Wireless, you pay a cellular unit for the, for the, the gateway, the, the one, and then the ones that you add onto that, you don't have sale fees for this size. Most growers really get excited when you talk about cutting the bill down on an annual an annual deal. So that's something uh, we'll be offering uh, for 2016. Um, our units are $1,200, our, our cellular units, uh, our mesh or wireless ones are uh, $950. Um, the, uh, you know, we have hourly uploads, I mean, we have graphs, interface, sensor history. Uh, we have a text alert, so when you set your trigger, uh, you can set up a, a level. Uh, if you're a farmer, y'all don't ever get caught up in something and the, wheel, the wheels come off the bus for a day or two. <laughs> I know y'all aren't that way. You're very organized and, and things don't really get hectic. But uh, in the midst of that, if you were to get caught up in something uh, for a day or so or didn't have thought you were okay, they'll text you and let you know if you hit your trigger and you weren't aware of it. Um, this is a... Uh, um, uh, something that we'll be bringing this year is there's lots of different opinions what the exact soil moisture probe is preferred. Uh, our approach is a little different, uh, or not really that different, but we're supporting every main brand of soil moisture sensor. We'll hook to our box. So if you want a Syntec, get a Syntec. If you want an aqua check, get an aqua check. If you want a watermark, get a watermark. If you want a Decagon, get a Decagon. Um, there again, there's lots of opinion which one is the best, and we're going to leave it up to you to decide which one you prefer. Our units will hook to them, and you can read which probe you want. Uh, there again, the box is 1200 and then you can, the probes that you buy, the probes alone go from a watermark that's $40, $50 a piece, and you usually buy three of those, so it's that $150 to $200. Um, like Coleman said, or you can get a volumetric probe. They generally range from a thousand, give or take. I think you said one was 900. Some of the, the longer you get, the more expensive they get. So, uh, you know, some of them even go up to $1,500 just for the probe. So you're going to have a box that's a thousand, twelve hundred, then you're going to have whichever probe you choose. Uh, so that's something to consider. In my consulting business, we opt for more equipment. Not necessarily always the most expensive equipment. Um, so it's, it's just a consideration. Ours are, are weather cable. We can get a rain bucket, wind, temperature, 
humidity. Uh, they're just add-ons. Uh, this is a soil moisture talk, so I won't spend long here, but we have pivot automation. A GPS track them. You can tell them where you want them to stop. You can remotely cut them off after it rains. If it rains, you don't want to cut everybody off. You cut every pivot you got off them as fast as you can click on them. Uh, how often do y'all's pivots work now? <laughs> a pivot is a beast. They're going to tell you when they shut off. Our guys love those. Ryan's at 120 miles and making the lap to see everybody to see if they're just running for the day is a chore. Our growers. Love uh, our pivot units. That's 1200 for Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, our units are 1200 dollars, and then just depending on what you add, soil moisture sensor, rain temperature, it's just add-ons. Uh, pump automation is a big push for pump automation. These have timers in them too, so you tell them to cut off at midnight. Uh, electric ones we can start and stop. Uh, they'll notify you if they cut off power flickers. They cut off, they'll let you know. Um, there again, you know, all this is access to your phone, computer, tablet, um, that sort of thing. And as you know, rice, for you guys that are rice, AWD is a big deal. Um, and we will have a rice unit this year. Uh, there again, the, the base unit is 1200 and you add the sensor there, a couple hundred bucks. So, um, anyway, uh, like I said, the thing that sets us apart from uh, uh, is that we actually have a product line where you have to get what we consider mainstream remote sensing. You can get it all in one location. You log into your console, your moisture stuff's here, your pits are here, your pumps are here. I didn't mention flow meters. We have a flow meter unit, uh, which is an add-on to our pump units. Um, it's all in one, one place, one console. Uh, I like to juggle several different things. Uh, that's, that's what I got. Thank you, Duke. As you can see, there's many options. Uh, and as far as getting data out of the field, uh, I have no doubt that it can be gotten out of the field and to your computer or, or smartphone, whether it's cellular. One thing that wasn't talked about today was satellite communications. Uh, if you don't have a cell signal, uh, there are companies that offer that. So if you want the data, it can be gotten but it will take a little money. Uh, what kind of questions do you have for them? Uh, do you agree? Uh, this is an interactive part. Need a little help. <laughs> Ed, come on. I'll do a little advertisement for everybody. Uh, we did a natural, I, I said this earlier, but I won't keep repeating myself. We did a survey of 925 growers in the United States cotton producers. And one of the questions we asked for the irrigated producers, are you using a sensor to schedule your irrigations? And we only had about 20% say they were, so there's an opportunity here. Because of those 20% that were using it, uh, in every region of the country, we had a minimum of 100 pound. They were reporting yields 100 pound average greater than those who were not using the soil moisture sensors and their water use efficiency was increased by 10%. So that to me says there's some real opportunities for people that are willing to, uh, to take advantage of the state of the yeah, I'm really excited to see all these different companies having solutions for producers. Um, Lyle just helped us along with Brian Live and a couple others do a publication on how to use soil moisture sensors. And so that is on our website, uh, cottoncultivated.cottoninc.com. If you go to research and reports, it'll be one of the first four up there. So, I, again, I'm a real advocate for this technology. I think uh, irrigation is something that, and I don't say this in some quote reporters on some of them, but, but I will say there's just room for improvement, and we, there's a lot more advantage that our, I think that people can be uh, to making of these technologies. Uh, the farmers here, uh, do you, are you using soil moisture sensors now or, but you're interested in it or? Maybe not. <laughs> what are some of the barriers people are seeing too? Yeah. I know there's a cost barrier. Yeah. I think the wireless has taken away some of it, but what's the, 
some other, I know there's other hindrances. It's a change in form and philosophy. I mean, how are veteran farms? 50 to 60 to 70 year old men that have done something the same for 30 years and trying to get them to change fundamentally what they've done forever is a, is a challenge. Yeah, even with the, even yeah. with the technology you know, and labor on top of that. Um, the guy starts every Monday and you're going to tell him to start on a Thursday? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. It's a, it's a challenge. Yeah. The biggest problem is commodity prices. You get some money flowing back in this country and help out. I'm telling you. Uh, I agree with you. That, that is a hindrance to adapting this new technology. Well, uh, if there's no other questions, I think our time is about up, and I thank you and the speakers for being here.